Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy and today we are going to be talking about how much money I made my second month as an Airbnb host. This is for January of 2023. Our first month as Airbnb host was in December. I made a video on that. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. Go ahead and check it out. But this is going to be walking through January of 2023. We own a three bedroom, two bath, little beach bungalow, less than a mile from the beach, right outside of Tampa, Florida. And so for January, we had 24 total nights booked across eight stays. So like eight guest parties, and we only had seven unbooked nights. It would have been even less than that, but we had a cancellation towards the end of the month, which actually ended up being a really good thing. And if you hang around to the end, I will tell you a little story time. But we had seven unbooked nights, which put us at a 77% occupancy with an average daily rate between 138 and 412, which I feel like is pretty good. By the way, I am more than happy to share all this information. I think that transparency is how we all learn. So if you're a new host and these kind of videos kind of help you gauge where you're at or you're thinking about getting into Airbnb, I think transparency is wonderful. That's why I'm doing this. But if you find this helpful, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and subscribe, it just gives me a little virtual pat on the back and also helps me with the Airbnb algorithm, Airbnb algorithm, YouTube algorithm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so our total gross income for January was $6,614, which is really exciting because that's up from December. Our mortgage insurance and taxes was $3,356. Our cleaning fees were $1,440. Airbnb fee, which is what you pay out to Airbnb for being able to list your house on their platform was $344. Utilities were $398. We have a weekly service for pool, lawn, and pest, three different companies but they come out every single week and that's $825 a month. And then we also spend money on linens, soap, shampoo. We have a gift basket for every single guest. When we first opened in December, I went out and bought a ton of stuff. I stocked up and we didn't actually have to replenish anything in the month of January. So I'm not sure how much this is going to be every single month. We'll take a look at it at the end of the year and kind of average everything out. But for the sake of this video, let's call it $40. I feel like that's probably pretty fair and close to where we'll be. So you can see from these numbers that we actually made a little bit of money in January, which hurrah, yay, so exciting. But story time. We had a guest towards the end of January and it wasn't very long after they had checked in and they, you know, sent us a note and said, Hey, the water in the hot tub is really low and it's cold. Like, well, that's not, that's not normal. <laughs> Luckily they were fantastic guests. So, so sweet. And they said, help us troubleshoot this. We've got a hot tub at home. Maybe there's a button that hasn't been pushed. And we tried kind of walking through it nothing was working. So we called our hot tub repair guy. Thank goodness we had already had someone picked out. We haven't had any issues with the hot tub up until this point, but as we were getting our cleaners, electricians, handymen in place, we just figured that we were going to have an issue with this at some point in time. And so we had already selected a company to work with. He was amazing, totally rearranged his schedule to go out there and take a look at this for us. Lo and behold, uh, it is, it's broken. Some, apparently some little critter had gotten up there and chewed holes in all of the tubing or piping. I don't know. It was causing it to leak water based on the damage that had been done. There really wasn't a good way to repair this. And even if there had been, it would have been really, really expensive, more than the hot tub was worth. So at this point, we are out of a hot tub, crap, because we have bookings filled up for February and March. And honestly, April, May, June, we're really, we're, we're getting full. I immediately go into problem solving mode with my husband. I get on Wayfair, I get on Home Depot. I start looking for new hot tubs and everything is back ordered for at least five to eight weeks, which is no good because people get really excited about the hot tub. It's a nice feature of our backyard and we don't want to have to tell people for the next two months, you know, 
hey, sorry, hot tub broke, we're getting a new one. If that's how it ended up, I guess it, it is what it is, but that's not the route we wanted to go down. It's, it's not a great guest experience. So our hot tub guy said, hey, I've got this hot tub that I'm gonna sell, I can sell it to you, which was definitely a solution. This wasn't my ideal scenario. The hot tub that we had was nice, but we knew that over the next five years or something, we would probably end up needing to get a new one. And when that time came, I was going to upgrade. I was going to get something brand spanking new, a little bit fancier. We would have done that, but everything sold out for like five to eight weeks. So this was a solution. And, you know, honestly, now that the hot tub is in, it does look very, very nice. And we'll end up probably upgrading sometime in the next year, but this was a solution for right now to kind of solve a problem. You'll find that when you get into either Airbnb or just any kind of real estate, it's all about solving those problems and how quickly you can do that. So he was able to go out and take the old hot tub away, get the new hot tub installed. All of this happened during that time when we had that cancellation. So while it was kind of a you know, unfortunate situation that happened at the very least, (laughs) it kind of worked out that we didn't have back to back to back bookings. And we're trying to get this hot tub hauled away while guests were there because there was a lot of construction going on in the backyard when all of this is happening. So we solved that problem. But back to the numbers for the guest that wasn't able to use the hot tub, we did end up reimbursing them $150. I don't know if this is going to be our solution to every single problem. I've seen some other videos and read some articles where they say, don't give reimbursements, find a better way to kind of make up for that. Eventually, I think we want to get some virtual gift cards to nice restaurants in the area so that you're giving the guests something and improving the experience versus just taking down that nightly rate. But We weren't expecting this. We didn't have a plan in place for kind of making things right with the guests. And so a reimbursement was the easiest thing to do. They really appreciated it. So we gave them $150 reimbursement for that, which you can see takes us down to $61 for the month. And then of course we had to pay for the new hot tub, getting an electrician in there to make sure everything was up to code having the new one installed. And so that came out to $3,300, which takes our month down to $3,300 in the hole. It's a little disappointing because we were right on the brink of making some money on this. If things are going to break, it's just a matter of when. But this is real estate. This is the name of the game. So when I look at the numbers overall, I mean, you're not going to have like huge things break like a hot tub every single month. Knock on wood. Uh, you're not going to have these huge things break every single month. And if this hadn't happened, we would have started to make money. When I also look at our numbers, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for improvement. When you get into this, you can do all your research. You can learn all the things about Airbnb and and we did, but at some point you just kind of have to jump in there and learn along the way. And that's what we're doing. I think is really, really fun. You can prep as much as you want, but there's nothing like actually doing to work through things and learn. And when I look at our numbers, I think our occupancy rate is pretty good. I mean, 77% for only being two months into this is a really healthy start, but that can definitely get better. And then when I look at pricing, when we started this, we looked at competition. We also have smart pricing software that gave us a suggestion and we just kind of rolled with it. Looking at our calendar and based off the fact that we are almost completely booked for March, April, May, and even further out, I think our pricing is probably a little too low, I think we can probably raise that up in coming months, which will definitely help our numbers. When we started this, we didn't have a ton of expectations. Like I said, we're just learning along the way. And so we have a two night minimum on our profile, which is what our insurance requires. We've been getting a lot of three and four night stays, which is fantastic, but it kind of leaves some awkward days on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where that's not a super desirable stay because there's no weekend attached to it. And we've been lowering 
those rates just to keep that occupancy level up. When I look at the opportunity moving forward, when we think about high peak season months, we could probably increase that minimum stay to five, six, maybe even seven nights because the demand's gonna be there. And that's gonna help so many things. Number one, it's gonna help our occupancy rate because we won't have kind of these awkward, you know, one, two, three days in the week. We'll also be able to get that higher nightly rate because it's all with one stay and it's gonna help with our cleaning fees because we'll have fewer turnovers if you're increasing the number of nights. Again, we're brand new to this. We're just learning. Once again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I think that's it for today. So until next time, bye guys.